Welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be covering eight important clinical signs that are associated with an underactive thyroid, which is also known as hypothyroidism. In this video, you're going to see lots of real clinical photos to help you learn about these different signs. Now remember, the thyroid gland is a small gland that sits at the front of the neck, and when it becomes underactive, you have reduced amounts of the hormone thyroxin. There are lots of different causes of hypothyroidism, and I won't name them all, but they include things such as autoimmune disease, inflammation of the thyroid, which is known as thyroiditis, iodine deficiency, as well as side effects from medications, amongst others. So without further ado, let's cover the eight clinical signs that you might see in someone with hypothyroidism. And please remember that just because you might have one or two of these signs does not necessarily mean you have hypothyroidism. So number one is something called eczema crackle or asteatotic eczema. This is basically a form of dermatitis in which there's crazy paving splitting of the surface of the skin. It usually begins as dry skin and as the disease becomes more severe, the skin can crack and cause fissures. These fissures are the result of water loss from the surface of the skin. It typically occurs especially in winter months when the skin is more at risk for becoming dry and it is more common in the elderly. The eruption can typically occur on any skin area, but it most often presents on the front and side aspects of the lower legs, but it can also be present on the back, trunk and arms. Now, management of this is usually with emollients and topical steroids, and of course treatment of the underlying hypothyroidism. Now, the second clinical sign to be aware of are cold peripheries with pale and dry coarse skin. Often this dryness is due to decreased sweating, though the exact connection between the thyroid and sweat glands is unclear. Now moving on, let's discuss clinical sign number three, and this is a yellowish hue to the skin, which is secondary to keratotenoderma. Now keratotenoderma is the yellow-orange discoloration of skin due to keratinemia, which is a condition where the blood level of beta-carotene is above the normal range. Now this is not just found in hypothyroidism, it can also be seen in other conditions like diabetes, liver disease and kidney disease, and it's important not to get it mixed up with jaundice, which can look quite similar. Now I've included more information on this sign in the description box of the video if you want to do some extra reading. Clinical sign at number four is sparse and brittle hair, which can come out in handfuls. You may have noticed that your hair feels more dry or coarse than normal, and this can be a sign of hypothyroidism. Linked to this is number five, which is loss of hair in the outer third of the eyebrows, which you can see in the following photos. Again, treatment for this is to treat the underlying hypothyroidism. Clinical sign six is slow growing or rigid and brittle nails. Perhaps the primary reason that this occurs is that every system in your body slows down when there's not enough thyroid hormone. Therefore, the skin doesn't renew as quickly, the hair growth cycle is suppressed, and nail growth is slowed and compromised. In regards to nail growth, well, ridges can form when cellular turnover slows down, allowing keratin cells to build up before they have a chance to grow out. Number seven is something called myxedema. This can occur in long-standing cases of hypothyroidism or severe hypothyroidism resulting in puffy face, eyelids, legs, and feet. Now, myxedema describes a specific form of tissue swelling due to deposition of cutaneous tissue, which you can see in these photos. And finally, people with hypothyroidism may have delayed wound healing. Other common symptoms due to hypothyroidism include weight gain, cold intolerance, low mood, and menstrual disturbances, so irregular or heavy periods. I've included lots of links in the description box for more information on hypothyroidism, and if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I do try to respond to all questions where possible, but please remember this channel is designed as a medical education channel, not an individual clinical advice channel. If you do have individual clinical questions about your own health, please consult your own doctor. I hope you learned something new and interesting in today's video. If you did, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and until next time, thanks for watching and bye.